Thank you very much. The America's Cup is a very emotional issue for most Australians, and we have, well, assembled what we consider to be the most distinguished panel ever to discuss its future. And without any further ado, I'll introduce them to my right, Rex the Moose Mossop. Thank you. <laughs> to Rex's right, to Rex's right, a Perth boy, Peter. I was with Ian when he lost the cup, Gilmore. <laughs> And, of course, the legend himself. Ian, I'm afraid I was the one who lost the Cup Murray. <laughs> but he may yet get it back if the pundits are right. To my left, Debbie, skull of Russ Lane. <laughs> to her left, Australia's one and only international orange rolling champion, Peter Halen. <laughs> and direct Undercover from the Mossad, Lex Marinos. <laughs> now, it is a difficult issue, it's an emotional one, and I would ask all members of the panel, please, to think before they open their mouths. What am I saying? What a stupid thing to say. <laughs> Debbie, over to you. Well, you picked the right person, obviously, to start with, given those writing instructions. Well, I guess I have to agree with a bit of what Keith Stackpole said in that, that I think once we won the America's Cup, the mystique sort of went off it a bit. It, to me, it sort of strikes me as, you know, a bit like one of those Rubik cubes. You know, they drive you crazy until you actually get it. Once you've actually worked out it, chuck it in the bin. It might take you ten years to work out how to do the damn thing. Once you've done it, it doesn't seem to be uh, quite such a, so much of an attraction anymore. I, you know, I think that that's one of the reasons the gloss has gone off. Uh, I think the other reasons are, you know, the ones that are well documented about the last series being, or the last challenge being a farce where, you know, they've had a, you know, hundred, no, 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 hundred thousand foot catamaran against a dinghy or something, that whatever it was. That was Fastnet. You're thinking of Fastnet. Fast yeah, yeah no, different no, race. There was a whole lot of dinghies at all. Yeah. You know, yeah, but anyway. Lex, you seem to, sorry, Lex, you seem to be agitating up there. Deb, look, that's typical post-feminist Marxist point of view. <laughs> Listen, one thing I'll say, now hang on, Chris. I come from the land down under, you know, where Kay Cotty comes from. And sailing is so great. Greece, these sailing days. is great. <laughs> and why sailing is great is that it is now truly an internationally equal sport. And what it's done, it's got it's elevated sport from the realm of <coughs> the ridiculous to the sublime. Because now it's done away with equipment, no, no, no. with it's training, with seasickness. You don't have any of that now. All you do is submit your plans. All you need is a set square and a protractor and some logarithms. You draw up a few plans, and this is a first for Live and Sweaty. These are the Greek plans for their entry into... <laughs> See? <laughs> See, it's got the wings on the side. <laughs> the wings out here on the keel. This is the lost city of Atlantis. Yes. Now, you just submit your plans. You don't have to compete at all, and people, they just evaluate. It's just like an exam, and they say who wins. Thank you, Lex, for elevating the argument into something approaching intellectualism. Rex. Well, you've had the intellectual approach. I'll give you the positive approach, all right? Mm -hmm. In this day and age, with a recession on, this millionaire sport of uh, yachting has not got the attraction it used to have. There's clearly that we've got to do something about it. I've already spoken to Ian, and he's agreed with me 100%, haven't you, Ian, <laughs> about this particular thing? I suggest that all the boats, all the countries that are going to participate in the America's Cup, put in an amount of money each. We build 12 identical boats, or 15 identical boats. Not 50 million each, just a, a moderate amount of money, 500,000, something of that nature. All identical. Just identical, be quiet. <laughs> identical spars, identical uh, sails. The only difference will be the skippers, and the crew. And that way we will see an America's Cup worth seeing because we'll be seeing who are the best sailors in the world. My God! <laughs> that was a lot of personality there for Rex. <laughs> we apologise, we'll be bringing you the more normal, irrational Rex next week. <laughs> now, oh no. Now, nice Ian and Peter, <laughs> you guys are putting you you guys are putting in three or four years of your lives, your money, your livelihood, basically, to challenge for this cup next year. Sell it to us. Why should we go for it? Well, let's get one fact straight to begin with. It doesn't cost fifty million dollars, or fifty gazillion million dollars, or whatever no, you want to say. Rex just said that you don't you don't bother arguing. That was with a little the bit of uh, says, poetic doesn't... license. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Poetic it didn't license. rhyme, but don't worry. About it. <laughs> Well, it doesn't cost that much. It costs a tenth of that, or maybe 20% of it. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, 15%, right? Uh, <laughs> come and see us tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> 
But really, it's a, uh, it's a, we think it's a good thing for, for the country, and we think it's a good thing for numerous reasons. A, it's a sporting event that uh, is without question in our field, yachting, is the hardest thing to win. You know, not only do you have to have a boat, and in the ideal world, we'd have 12 equal boats, as Rex said, we wouldn't have to worry about tank testing and design and all of that. So you do basically agree with Rex's premise? Well, Peter would. He's, you know, Does Peter and the crew. You? Uh, why it should worry it worry? Me. Why should it worry? Because he agrees with me. We seldom have Where's guests uh, of this calibre on the panel, so let's hear from them. <laughs> <laughs> but what it adds more to, more than that, is that us in Australia, we're the David, and we have to go and conquer the Goliaths of the world. And they'd be the America and the Russians, a lot bigger countries. <laughs> I don't see why it should be so. Yes, what have you got to say? Yeah, Peter, why, why do we have to do it? Why do we have to do it, though? I mean, couldn't we do it in another way? Couldn't we do it technologically through science or something like that? Why can't we put, put all this effort and fervour into, say, gene shears or something like that? <laughs> or, or gene miles, for that matter. <laughs> I think that one of the real reasons that why Australia has had three very colourful decades in the America's Cup is purely because of, I guess, why we're here tonight, is because of the controversy surrounding it. And that is one thing, one aspect of the sport that really makes it, it quite exciting. Mm. I guess the, uh, I mean, Ian and I, although we're great friends, we're probably diametrically opposed as to what we think is the ideal boat, because Ian would always love to be designing, yeah. and I would always like to be sailing in identical boats as, uh, as Rex suggested. But if controversy is the yardstick, I mean, why can't we just have international dingo-snatching baby contests? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bit sick too. But, I mean, that's controversy, that's huge controversy. <laughs> is controversy what the cup is about? What does it give us? I'll answer that. <laughs> it's, a, it's about competition. It's about competition of sailing teams. It's about competition of people representing their country in design, engineering. Lawyers. Fundraising, lawyers. But no, the lawyers have gone the court case. You saw it got the yeah. flick before. Yes. That's bad news. So it's, it's really, it's a matter of everything. It's putting, the boat is a product that the country sends there. And the product, our boat, is what represents it. It represents technology, science, so it's something we should Sporting, be proud of. skills, crew, we, all of absolutely. those things. Absolutely, we should be proud of it, very much so. Well, Peter Halen is someone we should be proud of. He's gone out there uh, as, a, I suppose, a self-made entrepreneur and, and represented at the highest level and won. And haven't had a chance to lose it yet, which is very important. No, and I see you have a replica here <laughs> of the Fillmore Cup. Yes, yes, that's a replica, it's yes. It's very the, impressive, the, I'm, I the, might add. The real cup stays in the Orange Rolling Committee Club. But it's mm. a bit like the, the one that they gave Alan Border when he won the Ashes, the little one, you know. Yeah, yeah. right. Now, what do you think, Peter? Why... Do you agree with these gentlemen that the America's well, Cup is something we should be proud of? I can't see Ian looking anything like a David in a Goliath battle, can you? I mean, that just doesn't fit at all. No, he doesn't. And I really... like a Goliath in a Goliath. That's right. Yes, that's, yes. Exactly, that's probably the... Yeah, I've got to agree with Would you said. rather, for instance, that Australians were getting behind your effort to win the Orange Rolling It's a lot cheaper. Twice. A lot cheaper. Yeah. I don't like the idea of getting the lawyers out of it. That's a bit of a shame. But I can't agree with Rex. Um, I mean, if you take the competition out of the boats, I mean, surely that's depriving all sorts of enterprises within the country. Um, you've got to keep the comp you've got to keep the boats different. You can't have them all recession sailing at one times, boat. No, I recession mean the great times. the great thing about orange rolling is you get these <laughs> oranges out of the orchard in the morning, and they're all different. And you know the skill of choosing. Well, what do you do for a living, sir? What's that got to do? I'm with just Rex? interested. I'm a solicitor. <laughs> <laughs> now I point out he's a solicitor with an eye for the main chance yeah. because this is the new Peter Halen designed orange for the uh, international orange rolling championships later this year. Look at that. We've got a wing peel. Totally technological. Now this cost twelve million dollars to develop. If it's is that a right? wing keel, let me guess it's a naval orange, right? Oh. I don't know why we bother, I really don't. <laughs> Lex, over to you for a, a summing up here, a nationalistic summing up, I think, because what we're talking about here is the metal of this country. Are we prepared to go out there and prove ourselves again? The metal boat doesn't dare so well. This is the Greek one again. Now this is cast iron, not metal. This is the side view of it. The point is that. If you're going to be sailing boats, I mean, it just seems a bit silly to be spending so much money on it when, when that money could be going to other causes. You well, know, in oh, fairness, I think... In, well, there is, <laughs> there is you, Lex, but in fairness, you guys aren't actually bludgeoning anyone to pay, are you? You're, you're asking for contributions if people wish to support it. Well, it, that's right. It's not like our Olympic game bids or anything like that. We're not taking taxpayers' money or anyone's money. We're just saying, we're doing this. 
We think it's a good idea. 220 companies supporting us think it's a good idea. And 50,000 people that are members think it's a good idea. Mm. So of all the people that we see, which is hundreds of thousands of people around the country as we take our America's Cup round and do all those sorts of things, they all can remember where they were in 1983. And certainly, even Debbie can remember where she was in 1983. I was in bed, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. well, guys, if I could just give you one bit of advice. If you really want to get some money, just try eight cents a day as a campaign. It works a treat. It certainly worked for us. <laughs> Ian Murray, Peter Gilmore, thank you very much for coming on the show and debating this openly and freely. I would like this is bleeding. I'm just bleeding. I've just, I need to go in the blood bank or the blood, the blood bin. bin. Yes, the blood you, bin. you must go in the age bin. Rex, save that blood because we're going to take this blood with Rex down to Melbourne next week. Next week, yes, we will be in that fair southern city where the battle of the codes is on. Rex Mossop, V Crackers Keenan, Dermot Burton, our very special guest. Hot new band, Killing Time, also now. If you live in Melbourne and would like to be part of our audience, part of this bloodbath that's going to be happening, call this number after 10 o'clock on Monday morning. It's a Melbourne number only. 524 244. 524 244. Melbourne number only. We hope we'll see you there. Bring your controversy corner topics with you. To everybody, thank you very much. To you out there, Australia, good night. And I love you all. Should sponsorship. I beg your pardon. Someone over there is having a bit of an attack. If cigarettes are legal, should sponsorship be banned? To discuss this, let me introduce our panel. On this hand side, Rex the Moose Mossop. From Triple J, we have Ian Rogerson, Hard Coffee. And on his other hand side, Mikey Robbins from the Triple J Breakfast Show. On this hand side, Debbie Skull of Russ Spillane, the very special Peter Reed. And all the way from Melbourne, Lex Marinos. Make it well. This was sent from the Mad Hatters. Dear Rex, thought this new, new hat from our latest ski headwear range suited your nickname. Would you put that on for me? Yeah, certainly. This is um, Rex and his... All right, so Rex can wear that. Oh, oh, oh. Very nice. Oh, oh, oh. Sadly, the antlers are sagging slightly. Like well, that's what happens. Oh, yes, of course. Um, sex to guys and videotape, June 15, find out all about... Le Rex is, um, you know, sagging. You know, um, Peter Reed, tell, tell, tell me. So tell me, was Bronwyn right if cigarettes are legal, Peter? Bronwyn's always right. Is she? Of uh, course she is. Okay then. Ian. <laughs> Bronwyn was definitely right. You know, a lot of people think she's a uh, self-publicising airhead, but Man. they're wrong because she has method because Bronwyn wants to get her face out amongst and around Australia and the best way to do it for Bronwyn is cigarette advertising. Imagine this, Australia's first Marlboro woman on the stride of horse getting those backbench sheep in order. Or maybe sexy Bronwyn on the front of a Ferrari, you know, when only a Bron will do. Yeah. You know, she's great because she can actually turn people off smoking. Imagine if you, you saw Bronwyn as the role mo model and there you are, you're thinking, I'm not going to take up smoking. I'll end up looking like Bronwyn. Or they'll have little signs on the side of packets saying, you know, smoking can lead to wearing twin sets and pearls. No. <laughs> Oh, right, Debbie. Oh, no, I'm, I'm used to following that. Yes, I want to ask no, a, no, a no, question of a politician. Go, yes, I want to get right into Peter Reid. Go Peter, on. Why, I I the, well. why, why the double standard? Why do governments charge the enormous excise on tobacco and why do they make it legal to be sold all around the country in milk bars that can be sold in dispensing uh, uh, doers and so forth. You can put your dollar in the, in the tenants serious, around. Rex. Retail outlets. My word, I'm serious. I want to know why all bloody politicians tell lies. Now Woo! listen. Yeah. Just remember, hey, remembering, of course, that Peter, you are the master of a 10 second grab. Your time starts now. <laughs> <Bullshit>. <laughs> Basically, Bronwyn's an idiot. Now, oh, oh, now, oh, I've, now hang on, I've been a big fan of Bronwyn's. I've been seconds. a big fan of Bronwyn's ever since Divorce Court. <laughs> when we used to know her as Bronwyn the Bong. And I think that's the problem. <laughs> I think too much, too. 
why these brown ones been smoking too. Oh, oh, she used to love it in she those got days. The hair yeah. 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 And then she was snorting the hairspray. I think it's gone up here. Bronwyn has not smoked for at least 17 years, and even though everybody every day is asking her to get her butt out of Parliament, Debbie. Oh. I'm sorry, I just, can I just sum it up by saying anything Bronwyn Bishop says I disagree with? I don't think so. It's not necessarily That's so. A I mean, cigarettes. That's a personal disagreement with something a lady said. Cigarettes. Oh, look, you and this bullshit about women all agreeing with each other. Women do not all agree with yes, each other. No. Yes, we do. We do. We do. We do. Is not every woman's agreeing. Look, <laughs> just because every, just because every woman said no to Rex does not mean all women disagree. <laughs> Couldn't pull a root in a vegetable garden. Look at it. Put a hat on. This is not meant to be a Bronwyn Bishop bashing thing. Oh, why not? Why can't we have a Bronwyn Bishop bashing Because, program? because I feel like there it's is. It's terribly unfair. Oh, yeah, but you, because you play on the team. Against one, team I'm, the, I'm the only one here to defend. Well, all you've actually Listen, said is bullshit. Well, you better get used to it, buddy, because you're going to be doing a lot of defending no, the Bronwyn over the coming no, years. Bronwyn no, Bronwyn oh, and aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you had a shadow minister? Yeah, yeah. Basically, an honest woman. She's got a. She's got an honest point of view and she stands up for a point of view Thanks. and I appreciate that Thanks. but I want to know why all politicians I'll pull your bloody line. Did I tell you it was World Environment Day on Sunday? You can buy these fabulous t-shirts. Oh, Art, go green. It is not World Environment Day. It is World <laughs> Environment Day on June the 5th, and you can buy these at any supermarket beginning with the word Coles. Peter, Debbie. <laughs> no, I've had my say. No, you haven't. You I have had my say. No, you haven't. Oh, it wasn't very articulate. No, I, I just wanted to say... It sounds very articulate. I just wanted to say uh, how you. pleased the coalition must be that they made uh, Bromwell Bishop Shadow Minister for Health. What a perfect choice. Now, Peter... Smoking stunts your hair. Peter, <laughs> there is a point there. There is a point there. Hey, there is a... Peter. Can I just have a moment? Yes. I just want to send a cheerio to Bron when I told her. <laughs> <laughs> I told her I'd be on tonight and I'd look after her interests. Is she, she watching? <laughs> <She's>... <laughs> On that note, oh, I still think that you haven't addressed the question that, is, no. that if a product is legal, how can you ban its sponsorship? I'm precisely, I mean, in, in some parts of Australia, you can still buy bongs. So oh. I, I would like to see the downer bong. Oh, yeah. yeah suck on a downer. <laughs> You'd be glad you did. <laughs> Thank you, Mikey. Now, on that note, I think we might want... Peter Reith, thank you so much for joining us. No, I really enjoyed the last enlightening. bit. Enlightening. I thought that you would. <laughs> Rex, lovely to see you again. Debbie, Debbie. Debbie. thanks, Friday. Shelley Taylor. Off the air, Shelley it? Taylor Smith and Grub for joining us, the Electric Hippies. I've already told you about World Environment Day on Sunday. That's June the 5th. And um, the um, Women's Water Polo Club Championships are on in Melbourne this weekend down at the Hawthorne Aquatic Centre. And um, if you'd like to come and visit us next week on Live and Sweaty and have a wonderful time, give us the call on Monday, 02 950 3456 after 9 o'clock in the morning. If you'd like to write to us, please do at Post Office Box 9994 Sydney 2001 or fax us on 02 950 3466. Remember, if your team wins the toss, kick that way. Good night. Thanks for joining us. See you soon. Slap my butt with a pink serviette and call me Wendy. It's Mikey Robbins here and I'll be back on Monday morning with Helen Razor on the Triple J Breakfast Show. Let us be your morning glory. Every weekday from 6 to 9 across Australia on the Triple J Network. I love you all. <laughs>